Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Abrazo Football Podcast. I'm with Brooks today, as always. And first things first, Brooks, let's talk about last week. We were both kind of off for different reasons, so we didn't get to do this. So let's make up for some lost time and cover, or at least share some opinions on what in the world is going on at Paris Saint-Germain. So I want to get your take first, Brooks. I mean, you got players missing penalties, players refusing to give other players the opportunity to shoot the penalty, players giving up on plays, chest bumps or shoulder bumps, uh, reports of anger and uh, unrest. Give us, give us your, uh, give us your. When you say players, do you mean player or players? Situations. Probably a player. Is more yeah. <laughs> There's a player. Pres- I should say I should say directors or or uh, there's a president that's giving up on plays and yes. missing penalties. There's a there's a team. Uh, there's an owner. Uh, an owner. There's a sporting director. So that was just like this. Obviously, it, what seemed like the start of it, right? It was like, you know, that started circulating. You know, if you didn't catch it while you were watching a game, like you immediately saw that on all forms of social media. You know, Kylian Mbappe open wide on the left. He's got his arms up waiting for the pass to come. It doesn't come. So instead of, you know, following up and continuing to, like, run with it and potentially score off of the rebound, um, he just stopped, literally stopped running, turned his back, walked the other way. I was like, yeah, and I, and I you know, I love this kid. I think that I've kind of been an, an Mbappe apologist for a while, but that was not okay. Yeah, that was just... That's not something you want to see. Uh, the worst thing for me, though, like, so I don't know if you heard this, but like the the French media came out and were like, "Oh, the reason that he was so, you know, moody on the pitch was because of some news, personal news that he had encountered, you know, an hour before game time." Uh, so I don't know what he get a text on his phone. What was that? What was the news? They won't say. So that's why everybody's like, "No, this is just the French media trying to cover up for their, you know, star boy." So. I'm not, I can't obviously say whether or not it's true, but I mean, if that's, you know, if it is true, like maybe you don't, maybe sit this one out if you can't, you know, give it your all and you're in, you know, I don't know. It's, it's tough to say because he definitely didn't have the attitude that I think everyone expects you to have when you want to, you know, you want to be the captain, you signed this longer term deal, everybody thought you were going to leave, you say you're here because you love the squad, you love the project, you... You know, you're going to put everything into it. So that was, yeah, a bit, a bit, a bit hurtful, I guess, to see. So it was wild. I, I didn't like seeing that. Definitely didn't like seeing the media reports after yeah. that. Yeah, well, I mean, I guess, yeah, it does make sense, though, that French media would protect, Yeah. you know, their... They're, yeah, what you said was Starboy. Um, they're not going to throw him under the bus, which honestly, I respect that. I, res- I respect the, the media running, you know, interference and spinning stories <laughs> for their starlet. The, the, to me, and like, yeah, the giving up on the play was crazy, but the thing that shocked me the most. Um, Because there's two other things. There's one, he missed the first penalty, and then Neymar took the second. And Mbappe was trying to get the ball, and Neymar was like, nah, 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 nah. I'm going to do this. And scored it. Um, But remember over the summer when people were saying that the door was open for Neymar to leave. And then I think I saw some reports that said it was Mbappe that said that Neymar and Messi both can't stay at the club. It's only one of them I didn't can hear stay. that. And I, I didn't know he said that. Okay. I mean, I think he did. And I mean, I just, I mean, I don't get it. If you're the highest paid player at the team and you're calling all the shots and all of a sudden, you know, you're, you know, you're, if you think you're the top guy, you know, you're number one and you're number two have both decided that they are 150% invested in the project. They're going to come to Pratt training early, and they're both playing. They're both on track to have like career, like a season of their life. Why would you not want that? Like, no matter what happens, you're still going to be the star. Like, you're still like 
if Neymar and Messi are scoring and assisting, you're also going to be scoring yeah. and assisting. If they win the Champions League, you also win the yeah. Champions League. If they're doing well, like it's, I just don't understand. Like I, I tend now that you said that, I might kind of tend to believe that maybe there was something personal because there's, there's no ra- like I can't think of a rational reason why anybody, even if they're making that much money, why they would care so much or be like like that that's just such a weird reaction to me the giving up the because he's not like that the, you, like, you can't say that that's I, an mbappe trait yeah it's you just know so like weird. That. he's just not like that yeah that's why i'm so i'm looking so forward to them playing <laughs> yeah, tonight yeah later today to see yeah to see i guess yeah tonight to see what what it's like because as i was also watching the game i was like he's not even re- celebrating with the team like Guys are getting goals and they're celebrating, high five and hugging the whole thing. And like you see him like right. way off in the frame, just like walking slowly. And I'm like, why are you like? Are you sour that someone else scored a goal? You realize you can't score all the goals. Like it's okay for other people to score goals. So I'm just like, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm I I hope I hope it was a one off, but I guess we'll find out today if he if he's throwing tantrums, if he's not getting the ball or yeah. Whatever, yeah, we you know, always know. I mean, we've talked. Weird. Uh, yeah, it's it was weird. super weird, especially because this is not an Mbappe trait. I mean, people can say what they want to say about him, but like, we've been watching Mbappe like pretty much week in and week out since he's played for Monaco. Really, like we've we've always had you know the channel that, that can watch it, and I know not a lot of people choose to pay for that or whatever. So, you know, having watched him for so many years, both with PSG and the national team, it's last week was not an Mbappe moment. Like, it just didn't seem like anything he... Yeah, would like to do. Also, it's okay to be mad that you don't take the penalty. This is not new in football. This is not something that's, like, only happening in Paris with Mbappe and with Neymar. Like, first of all, it's happened in the past in Paris with Cavani and Neymar and with Cavani and Ibra. Like, it's a thing that every footballer, especially every striker, wants to score goals. Um, Not only that, they have clauses in their contracts that if you score X amount of goals, you get paid more money. So it's, you know, it's it's fine. I'm, I'm not mad about, like, you know, the whole penalty thing, being upset about not being able to take it. Like, everybody wants to take it. So, you know, if you don't want to step up and take it, that's the problem. So, yeah, I just hope that the media is right. Um, and I hope that, you know, everything with him and his family or whatever is okay. Um, because, yeah, that's not, that's not a typical Mbappe reaction. However, if that, you know... If that was if that was happening at Arsenal with a you know I think I texted you this like with with Arteta and it you know he's trying to pull this yeah he'd be gone he'd be he was like oh it was Madrid Welcome. you wanted to go to okay great we're gonna pay half your wages just to get you out of here so that that's the only yeah. other concerning thing it's like you know you, this coach comes in there talking about he's you know going to make rules and everything is going to be more strict and blah 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 blah, blah. we don't want star players because of their attitudes and this and that we're going to clean this up. So, you know, where were you on your words if this really was like an Mbappe having an attitude problem rather than Mbappe having, you know, heard really bad personal news? There was, a, there was an asterisk. There was an asterisk for Mbappe because he owns the club. That's, 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 the, that's, the, that's the part we missed. It's, it, unless you are the owner yeah, of the Yeah, hopefully club. that's not the case. But so yeah. it doesn't count for him. Because he's start, he starting. No, because he's starting tonight. He he is starting. All three of them are. Yeah. So it should. I hope it's not a spectacle, but I can't. I can't wait to see how this game would. Yeah, and, and I guess the last thing is that truly. you know he didn't play the first game um, of the season, obviously, which we all saw. Messi did an incredible job. And Neymar did an incredible mm-hmm. job. They looked super happy. So you know, again, like it's just the media. You have to re- you know reading the Twitter comments. It's like people are hating on him already. Like first game of the season, he didn't even play. People are like you know, they're so much better without Mbappe, leave, we don't need you, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, yo, y'all need to chill because he's, I don't know, very good. And let's just give him the benefit of the doubt right now. The kid's still, what, 22? Yeah. Yeah. Well, here's the other thing, though. Here's the other other thing that I saw. There were also, like, a Mm -hmm. couple tweets that the media had reported on that were kind of disparaging Mbappe that Neymar liked oh, no. on Twitter. They were like, the tweets were something along the lines of like, it doesn't matter if a player is the owner of the club. If the player can't make a penalty, like I should be able to take, Neymar should be able to take the penalty. 
or like they're just kind of yeah. like petty tweets like Neymar's better than Mbappe Mbappe's right. acting like a baby and Neymar liked him I allegedly I didn't go check his Twitter to see if they did but yeah. I mean I, yeah. I mean if, if that is true it's like I mean the, the way I see it is I just I feel like that like those are two of my yeah. favorite players Mbappe and Neymar like since before PSG I've always been a fan like to, like literally like favorite player number one number two so it like it sucks to see them like be pitted against each other and be yeah. on the same team but at the same time i would like to think you've been in a you've been in this relationship for like at like yeah. four seasons now it's like i like you you guys are like like closer than most family are at this point you've been together this long i would like to think that like you could have a bust up and like be upset at each other yeah. but you know after you know having dinner together or like sitting down you you could like laugh it off figure it out and be like that was crazy that we were beefing like that like a yeah, couple just weeks figure it ago. Out. like let's get our minds right like i fi- i feel like it's something like i've had like i've had arguments with friends and falling out so we didn't see each other for like a few weeks but then like you know we came back together you know shook hands and everything right. went back to normal and like some foul stuff was said okay. you know you know you even even fought people you know some but then it's like at the end of the day it's like you still my homeboy and you know like let's get back to doing what we were doing and like leave all that nonsense so it's easy like it, it's hard when people are on the outside like oh this is so bad and it's like nah, like yeah. that's my dog like it's okay like we're gonna figure it out and like keep moving forward and i hope it's more of that because i don't know i feel like it's easy to like go either way but like if both people are willing to be like you know what i was acting like an idiot you can get past yeah. it so i feel like you know but people got to sell newspapers too and we got to yeah sell but podcasts, the one so thing that i guess i will it. say in regards to that is like you know if you are neymar is you got to not like those comments you got to not like those posts you got to make sure that you're off of that stuff like let's not let's not like stir up the fire oh if that's true yeah it doesn't help no, I. I mean, you I just think it's. Yeah, you just I didn't, didn't go confirm and yeah, myself, yeah, okay. but I think. <laughs> look at his. Yeah, but I. I. It sounds like Neymar. It sounds. Everybody it needs sounds, to be more like. Um, you know, I, like Varadi. We need more Marco Varadis in the world. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I'm. Let me, I'm. I'm on his timeline now. I'm gonna see. Because because every. He, oh yeah, yeah everybody weird. everybody is like he's the glue of it's that dressing here. room he literally goes between the south americans the europeans the french the italians like he speaks the languages like he's just like kind of the glue but you can see that he liked those Come he on. liked it this is what this is what the tweet says today p in the psg game neymar humiliated the goalkeeper in the penalty kick. Mbappe, on the other hand, hit a very bad penalty and lost. That's a rough translation. Okay, he, he didn't score his pen. After the game, the coach said Mbappe will be the team's number one penalty taker. This is absurd. And it has a picture of Neymar running to the touchline celebrating, and Neymar liked the tweet. And then there's a few others. So, your boy's insane. Your boy is insane. <laughs> Yeah, stay off that. You got really got to stay off that. It's a team right now. You got to yeah. trying to do. You, you have an objective. Yeah, yeah. So they got to figure this out. All right, man. Let's right. move. Let's move on past PSG. We've been get, we gave them too much too much attention. We're feeding into the rumors, but I guess now would be a good time to talk about. So we talked about a negative story. Let's talk about right. something positive. So it's match week number two, three. Right? No, match week number three in the Premier League. Okay. And at the conclusion of match week number three, who's going to be at the top of the table Arsenal. no matter what happens? I have How's not felt, well, felt? because so Arsenal, I mean, this is insane. I don't know. I haven't felt like this. Uh, the thing is, that you, I, I don't know, as an apprehensive Arsenal fan, you really don't want to let yourself feel how you are starting to feel. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's been three games. Not the toughest yep. opponents, but games in the past that we've lost, specifically Bournemouth, you know? Yep. Um, so, I mean, look, our, like having watched pretty much all these games and you know, that I could, you know, we were on vacation or whatever, the Arsenal do look amazing. Granted, they're not playing Liverpool or City, but who also don't look amazing. Liverpool hasn't won a game. Um, City just drew to Newcastle today. Um, Arsenal yeah. look incredible. I mean, and this is again like 
Tottenham are barely winning, you know, one goal to nothing. It's, you know, or last minute drawing against Chelsea. Chelsea, I'm sorry, looks pretty awful. We'll get there in a minute. But overall, yeah, Arsenal look the best team in the league. And I'm not going to say they're going to win the league because they're not going to win the league. But three games in, I've not, I've not felt this way since Terry on replay there. You know, you, you, you've never felt like this as an Arsenal fan. So that's amazing. Three games in, Jesus is incredible. Zinchenko is awesome. William Saliba, man, this kid is going to be the golden boy. He's like he's a rock back there. He had an incredible goal yesterday. I mean, Martinelli also, like, everybody's just, it just seems like everything's clicking. Um, ben White at right back looks, I mean, he's making overlapping runs. This is insane. So Arteta obviously had a plan. Arsenal uh, board stuck with him. It's really something to see. I'm really happy. I don't want to let myself continue to be this excited, but when you see teams like Chelsea easily dropping points and Liverpool and City, like you know, it, it's I, I think that Arsenal being in the top four is, you know, it's got to happen this year. Man, I can't stop smiling. Yeah, I mean, so I'm looking at I'm looking at their schedule. They could easily go undefeated until, until right, October. I, know. <laughs> I was looking at that too. Again, trying not to get too overly excited, but yeah, you're totally right. That schedule is really in their favor. Here's the downside with that. It's like, who do they play? It's like Liverpool or someone, right, in October? They So on, on the 1st of October, uh, they play okay. Spurs, and then on the 9th, it's okay. Liverpool Yeah, so, I mean, I was watching the game yesterday, and another Arsenal legend, Lee Dixon, was commentating the game, um, and he brought up a good point. He was like... You know, yeah, Liverpool's not great right now, but, you know, you'd rather, I think it was, yeah, Bournemouth played Liverpool, I think, at the beginning of the season, first game, maybe second game, full of, okay, and he was like, you you know, this is when you want to play Liverpool, really, you don't want to play Liverpool three months in when they're starting to, like, click, everything is going, they're firing on all cylinders, and I'm like, yeah, that's a really good point, because Arsenal play them you know, in October, which is like basically the third month in. And at that point, they'll probably have these kinks worked out or whatever, you know, shaking off the, you know, season beginning jitters a little bit. They're getting a more talented squad with whoever they're bringing in. Like, yeah, you want to play, you want to play them now when Nunez is suspended for a couple of games and they've got, you know, figuring out how to do life without Sané or Sadio Mane. So, Anyway, yeah, Arsenal look yeah. amazing. Hopefully they go undefeated till deep into November <laughs> or next season. Yeah. Yeah, man, it, it, it's a possibility. Okay, well, yeah, I mean, I don't really have anything to add to it. I mean, congratulations. I'm glad they're playing well. I, You know, it finally seems yeah. to be shaking out for them. So that's fantastic. And then, like you said, Chelsea, on the other hand, like we're struggling and drawing against Spurs. I mean, I all I want, I just wanted to get on here and say I don't understand. I understand that there's not a rule. So for those that don't know, last week Spurs Chelsea drew two goals apiece. Harry Kane got an equalizer in like stoppage time, ninety third minute, whatever. But in the build up to the play, Kukurea or Cucurella or whatever, the Spanish boy with the long curly hair, got tugged by an Argentine. Brooks, I have to say it. It was an Argentine that tugged his hair. That's what happened. Now, the ref saw it, VAR saw it, and said it wasn't violent conduct. Now, I don't know if it should be a red card or not. But it's at least least a a free kick. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's... That's all I'm gonna say. So, I I wish they could go back because in the same play right. they scored. So I just wish they could go back and at least say like, okay, we definitely should have did this. Like they already came out and said it was a mistake and they messed up, but now you cost yeah. us points and then we turn around today and lay an egg against Leeds United, <laughs> get hit over the head, three goals. So I don't even want to talk to talk about that anymore. So we're just gonna we're gonna breeze on by and we're gonna talk about the club in the city where well, you're real quick, I will just say <laughs> just about Tottenham, Tottenham about Chelsea is that is that oh, look, no. having watched the last oh, two yeah. Tottenham games on un- I didn't want to obviously, but you know, I wanna watch Chelsea because I'm a fan of you and I wanna watch Tottenham because I wanna see them lose. The ref looked like 
I mean, yeah. and, and this is going to sound even more petty coming from an Arsenal fan, but it's like, yo, why are you getting refs who supported Tottenham their whole life? Because it, it is just like, it to me, it looks clearly like they're just on Harry Kane's side. Like, Harry Kane can do no wrong to these people. Tottenham can do no wrong. Like, it's just weird. It's just as... It seems like there's some sort of bias out there, and that's that's all I'll say about Tottenham. Yeah. I mean, I believe it was... Anthony Taylor was the ref on the field, and Mike Dean was the VAR. And, yeah, I mean, it... For against Chelsea. Yeah. Yeah, I... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it certainly looked like there was a bias, <laughs> and and yeah, in the I, I mean, I didn't know about the supporting Tottenham part, so that's a that's a huge indictment. You got to no. Go I'm just saying that it looks like they. You got to go do something. The last two weeks, it looks especially oh, okay. yesterday. I don't know who the ref okay. was yesterday. I, it wasn't anyone that I've like been familiar with seeing on the field, but it was. I mean, he would even go and like talk to her. It was just it was like gross. I'm like, yo, what, what? This is this is not right. But anyway. Petty oh. sounds petty from an Arsenal okay. fan, wow. but it just—it's just—it just looks it, like yeah. this is how it looks. Yeah. I mean, I'm just no. going to call it how it is, uh, and yeah. I mean, yeah. Moving on. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. The moving on, like you said, fine. Okay. So, city club in the city you currently reside, Barcelona, spent. Jeez. You know, they 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 mortgaged off. You know about hundred five hundred million dollars worth of assets to get a little bit of money to buy some of these players. They still haven't registered them all. Brooks Jules Kounde is still unregistered for their for their match tonight. If he doesn't get registered next week, he for can free. go for free. I just I just want to know. I mean, obviously, it's smart that his agent set the deal up like that, knowing what their financial situation is, knowing like okay, we'll sign. And, you know, you paid Sevilla money for me, but, like, you're not going to hold me up. Like, you took the gamble because you were confident, but I'm not taking this gamble with you. Like, if you can get me registered and pay me, I'll stay. But if not, I get to walk for free, which essentially means Barcelona would have lost, what, 70 mil? Did they get 70 mil mil for them? Or 60 million? I know it's that much. But, yeah, I mean, whatever they pay is just going to go down the drain. And, you know, I was thinking, like, man... Or yeah. there's all you know the stereotype that footballers just aren't smart. <laughs> um, what all these players yeah. keep wanting to go to Barcelona, and I'm like, what, what? Why? What are you? Why? What they they can't? And Barcelona has been figuring out how to do it by means of literally selling themselves. You know, this latest one was latest yes. lever pulled was like another thirty percent of Barca Studios. Um, and I'm like, geez, yeah. this is this won't stop. Like, there's not. I get that, um, what's his name, bought Lewandowski, Christensen, and either Kunde or Kessier. It was three people who, and he paid less for those three than the previous uh, president, Bartomeu, paid for just Coutinho. And even, I think, yeah. for just for Griezmann. Like, the, 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 the business of transfers has been incredible. Somehow people still want to come to Barcelona. Yeah. The best players in the world, Lewandowski, incredible. Kessie, yeah. his position, amazing. Um, Jules Koundé, one of yeah. the best young defenders in the world. I don't know why when they see how much trouble Barcelona is in. If they just don't believe it, is it not as bad as the media is making it? Like, why are they doing this? So yeah, you're right. Koundé's agent, brilliant. Yeah, and just to be clear, so this isn't in euros or pounds. I'm looking okay. at transfer markets and some in America they're showing dollars. So he's worth sixty six million. Barcelona bought him for fifty five. Okay. okay. Right. So that's fifty five million. So if I mean euros to dollars yeah. is pretty even right now. So let's just let's just say let's just say fifty euro fifty million euros. They're gonna lose fifty million euros unless they can either sell Frankie. Or Aubameyang, both which are linked with Chelsea, or you know they're gonna lose Jules Koundé, and then it's like where where do you go? Like do at this point would Chelsea accept you? Do you go back to Sevilla? But then again, to be a free, free. to go on a free, just about anybody with it, he's like you know what? Like hey, and maybe that was a part. Maybe that was the plan the whole time. You know, it could have been some four D chess. Like yeah, let's just go to Barcelona. 
we know they're probably not going to be able to register you because we 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 did a cross examination. We'll go there, and then we'll be a free agent essentially, and we can go get a better deal. Be like, yo, Chelsea, remember you were willing to pay eighty for me? Well, now I'm free. So just you know, give me you know three fifty a week, and uh, right. everybody wins. This was Chelsea's you know? masterstroke, and, uh, and Barcelona then, stealing all their players. Masterstroke. Yeah, and then they send them. <laughs> they send them. Uh, that that'd be hilarious. Okay, all right, man. We're running out of time. The PSG game just started, so let's let's blast through these last ones real quick. So just wanted. I just felt I felt obliged to call this out. Uh, Inter Milan also at the top of their Serie A table. I don't know if you've been watching them play. They look decent. Okay, not great. They look decent, but I was happy to see in their home their home return. Romelu Lukaku and Lautaro Martinez are back in business, assisting each other. Well, Romelu assisted Martinez; he didn't score. But anyway, he I just scored the first game. All, this is all I wanted to say is he scored. Yeah, he scored in the first game. He could have scored uh, a couple last night, but uh, just they hit the post. Um, I mean, I, all I'll say is he he looks like he's back to his normal self. I don't know if it's because Serie A might be inferior to Premier League or if he just didn't want to play for Chelsea, which it seems more like it's the latter, but he just decided he didn't want to play. He put out a, or Lautaro Martinez put out an interview the other day. He was like, yeah, man, Rom wasn't happy in London. I talked to him every no single way. day. Every single day. Every single day he was talking to this man. More than his... So I, I mean, so I'm like, people start saying stuff like this, and then Inzaghi was also like, we were in communication, and now he's back in Inter Milan, and he looks like, okay, like I, I've decided I want to play again. I'm a world class player again. It just, it makes me laugh, and I'm like, it's just like, it's sad because I'm like, I don't know what, I still don't know, like why did, it just doesn't make like my brain has such a hard time computing how people. this even happened, has like how. Well, okay. I don't. I mean, I. It, 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 you might be right. You might. You might be right. I just. I mean, it's that's it. This. It's one of the craziest things I've ever seen, though. Like a, a club pays a yeah. hundred million for a player. Player and coach don't get on. Player decides I'm not going to give you anything. As a, in a matter. As a matter of fact, I'm going to take from you. I'm going to take all of this money. And then I'm going to make you give me back to the club I want to. At the snap of a finger, I'm going to st- decide I want to play again. Like I, like I, I never know, missed the beat. But let's not forget that we've talked about this and they, they just didn't, you know, watching this a year ago, they weren't playing to his strengths. So is it, but is it really him? I mean, I, mean, I don't know. Yeah, when I, they say, oh, we're going to do this instead. I don't know. But we bought you to do this, but we're going to do this instead. And, who knows? But yeah, I don't know. I, I yeah. don't know. I'm just saying, I don't know. It could be the coach. It probably, it probably is. It's just like no matter which way I look at it, it's crazy. It's like if, if this is what this like. The, it's like the, the, it's like oh, he's not yeah. good anymore. And then you see him in the in the black or whatever the black and blue, and it's like okay, no, yeah, he's yeah, still, he still good. got it. Yeah. Why didn't you get this yeah. out of him? Why couldn't why couldn't you or 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 you know what? Instead of losing a hundred million, just bring Lautaro to the club. If that's if down. that's what it's gonna take <laughs> yeah. to get the must out of this man, sell Timo Werner and bring bring his brother yeah. to the club. Get bring Martinez yeah. to London. It, when he because he was in the interview and he's like, Lautaro, don't yeah. don't leave. I'm coming back. They should be like, okay. It's clear he wants to play with Lautaro Mercedes. Yeah. Let's just, let's just let's just put you know it's like when you like sign players and it's like like Neymar typically when they people sign Neymar, Rafinha will be somewhere the the other yeah, not yeah. not least the other Rafinha he'll be somewhere on the roster. Aiden Hazard goes somewhere. His brothers like there's always players that are like Cristiano Ronaldo. There was like some other Portuguese guy that would always go, like that went to meet Real Madrid with him. He never played a game, but it's like you're bringing like one of their homies as a part of the deal. Yeah. Bring his homie. Bring his home. It, the only difference is his homie yeah. can score twenty as goals well, a season. As, yeah, yeah. So yeah, as you know well. you're getting forty goals. He's also right. a world class player. But you bring up yeah. a good point because I was gonna say you know. 
I don't. So, so yeah, I, I think that I mean to not offend you and Chelsea supporters, like Jorginho had a really great year, whatever the year of twenty twenty was, in, in that year of twenty twenty one, and then Lukaku came over. Lu- yeah. Jorginho was not good. Conte was, but they didn't have a Conor Gallagher. I, so what I guess what I'm getting at is that there was no really creativity it didn't seem they just it seemed like what they tried to do they didn't have a martinez they didn't have conor gallagher he was a crystal palace so they just like yep. kept playing balls over the top it seemed um to like kai havertz and obviously tim Warner, who's mad fast and so they were kind of like not again i mean we talked about this they weren't playing to his strengths but i feel like you know if you bring a lautaro like you said or a midfielder who can be creative that could have helped the situation but obviously they didn't it was a bad situation He's now in what I think is a better midfield, obviously, at Inter, but also he's got his boy, Lautaro, who can, who plays well off of him. So, you're right. They should have just bought Lautaro Martinez. Yeah. That's what they should have done. It's yeah. a no-brainer. <laughs> just, buy, just buy Lautaro Martinez. And and then, I mean, also, like I feel like they dropped the ball. They let Ivan Perisic, who go to Spurs, they had yeah. a connection with him. And then uh, there's also there's a few other players on Inter that were like in talks that we were trying to get that we like Denzel Dumfries. Oh, um, that's right. Brazon or Br- uh, I, I always have a hard time pronouncing his name. Brazon Brazo- Brazo- or something like that. And then Nico Barella, 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 yeah. Barella, Brozovic Barella? and Barella. Barella. Okay. Yeah, like just you know, and bring that Turkish guy also. Chat Ch- 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 Yeah, Ch- I don't know Ch- that one. But yeah, I, I mean, know. and I mean, now that you you know that now, Lu- um, you know now Lukaku's talking that trash. Like none of these guys that he's playing with is gonna want to go to Chelsea after what they did to him. You know, yeah. they they <laughs> stay in the whole team staying in Milan, man. He's like, don't come, don't come. Like he's like, you might like I'm on a one year loan. Like we're right. gonna double down. We're gonna we're gonna double down and just get him to give me like, I'll like I'm not going to play in Chelsea and like I can't I can't blame him. I can't be mad at him. I just gotta cheer for Inter Milan and I hope. But anyway, anyway, okay. What what's next, Brooks? What else we got? We got to wrap. Man, you trash and they're trying I'm to get Casemiro to fix all the problems. Out. Bro, I'll tell you the truth. I'm not mad at Casemiro. He's 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 yeah. seen it all. He's done it all. He's won it all. But do you he really knows. go to a last Casemiro place knows. team if you're Casemiro? Yo, no. Here, here. This is why. This is why. This is why. This is why. This is why I don't okay. think this is an issue. So Casemiro has seen it all, okay. won it all, done it all. He's a legend at Madrid. No one will contest that. His his legacy is cemented in Madrid, like Ronaldo's. Like Ronaldo's, but man, you so stupid. They offered them sixty million plus, or it, it, like I don't know, plus that, like an additional ten uh, add-ons one. or something. <laughs> yeah, so you like as like if you're like you're Casemiro, like you're a legend, and you just wanted the double. Now you can leave the club at thirty years old. Yeah, earn let's just say sixty million for that club. Basically, pay play pay for your replacement and uh, Aurelian Chuamani. Okay, I just paid for that transfer alone. I'm gonna go to Man U and get a. They're, I his, they're stupid. giving him stupid money, stupid money, stupid money. So it's like I'm gonna go get a huge payday. I'm gonna go double my double my salary to the team that sucks and help the team that I you yeah. know that I that I'm a legend at it's like from I'm like I could see why you would do that you know it's like not, like the pressure is off like you don't have to prove any like at this point at least if I'm him I'm feeling like I don't have to prove anything at Manchester I'm just going to go here and get paid and you know if we win the Europa League fine but I know like his expect I feel like he has to say, "I want a new challenge" and all these things. So, like, Man U isn't uh, like because Man U's delusional; they think it's real. But like, he's under no disillusion. He's like, "We're not, we're not. I'm not going to accomplish anything at Man U, but except to like fill yeah. my bank account." So yeah, boy That's Ronaldo, all. and I'm okay with that. I, I'm legitimately okay with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, no, huh? he's going to see his boy Ronaldo fill his bank account. Yeah, for, or for yeah, Ryan. yeah, and that's all it well, is. Well, so you, it's a, sorry, keep this going. Is, no, that's. All, I mean, that's all it's I a good point, but also like you say, Casemiro's thirty, so they're paying 30. near seventy just to get him, and then they're paying it's close to four, 
something a week, right? That they're paying this guy. And while he, and he, and I'm, I, he, he, he shows up every game for, Ma, for Madrid. He plays hard. He's almost like Pepe. Pepe, like, always left it on the field for them. Was dirty, but, you know, got away with a ton. Um, yeah. And, you know, I just, man, Madrid is, or Man U is so, they're so bad. So, 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 so bad that you just need way more than that. And everyone's been saying no to them. They've been linked to more people than, like, anyone in this transfer window. And good for them for getting Casemiro, one of the, obviously you said it, like, he's a legend, one of the best right now to, to come to them. But, man, 30 plus years old or 30 years old and putting a lot of money into that for someone who hopefully can play quite a bit longer. But when, when you were looking at, you know, uh, I don't know, because their midfield right now is Scott McDominay. <laughs> You know, if <laughs> Scott and Fred. Fred. Scott and Fred. Christian Erickson, who's 33? What is he, Scott 32? And Fred. I don't know. Casemiro, who's 30. Let's see. I just don't get it. It just doesn't make sense to me. Like, Frankie de Jong made sense, but it also made sense for Frankie de Jong to not go yeah. there because he's in Barcelona um, at a much better team, even though they're in shambles. But yeah, I just, I'm very confused, I guess. I really don't get it. Yeah, and and I I just looked. I, I okay. confirmed the salary. Do you want to guess how much they're paying, Mister Casemiro? Uh, I would say over four twenty five a week. Okay, well, they're not. Okay, that what crazy. is it? They're not that crazy. Three fifty. Three fifty. I mean, that's it money. is. It's not the first time a club has done that. Specifically, Arsenal has done it to, with a couple guys in the last few years, but. Uh, learn from Arsenal's mistakes. Yeah, yeah, it's not like it's not it's Yeah, that that's the thing. Yeah, it's like it's not an unreasonable wage for someone that's worth it. And I'm not saying right, Casemiro yeah, isn't yeah. worth it, but he's thir- but he's 30 years old and you know you're not it's not going to it like it might help, but you're not going to win it. Like you probably like is paying Casemiro 35 or 350k a week worth winning the Europa League? Right. Well, Knowing that you know, like anything could well, happen. Well, so and just to just to kind of finish this, like I I know that Man U has one of the worst wage bills right now for some of the worst players in the league, like or old. Like, let's uh, Cristiano Ronaldo is amazing, um, and I think that if they get rid of him, they will eighty. It will be a big mistake if they get rid of him this year. But he's on five hundred and fifteen thousand pounds a week. Um, that's like six hundred. That's nearly six hundred thousand dollars a week. De Gea. Three hundred and seventy-five thousand pounds. That's over four hundred thousand a week that they're paying him. Um, Jaden Sancho, three fifty, but he's twenty-two years old. Rafael Varane, three forty for twenty-nine-year-old. Yeah, it's they're they're it's two, Martial who hasn't scored in like six and a half years is at two fifty a week. It's Golden Boy still getting paid. He is. Mark and Marcus Rashford's at two hundred. Harry Maguire, one eighty nine. Like their wage bill is insane. Christian Eriksen, thirty is one hundred and fifty. It's yep. just, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's. It, I mean, yeah. Anyway, I mean, so I wish him the best of luck, but it's not. It's not going to help. help. And uh, just Man, you, yeah. To wrap to like just to finish up, I forgot to tell you this. Like, our or Argent Argentina Adidas has a has a clause in the contract that they can. Technically, they can pull out of the contract with with Man U if they don't make if they like don't make Champions League um, multiple years in a row. Well, technically, they can pay. I think it's twenty percent less um, than their you know than the contract is stipulated at um, if they don't make Champions uh-huh. League two years in a row. That seems like it's going to happen again. So it's basically the if if there's there's a bonus structure and there's like a I guess a reduction structure or like a non bonus structure. Um, they the, yeah. oh, the bonus structure. They only get four million a year if they reach those bonuses. But if they don't reach those bonuses, they lose twenty two point five million pounds a year if they don't make Champions League for more than two years. That's a huge amount of money to not be making. Yeah, that's yeah. They're not going to get relegated, yeah. but if they get relegated, that's, Adidas I can mean, tear up the entire contract and they don't owe them anything else. It's just crazy. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, the, 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 that, that will never yeah. happen. But that's an, that's an absurd, um, yeah, that's an absurd amount of money to lose out on for sucking so poorly. But you know, I guess we'll yeah. see. 
We will see. I personally, I think it'd be cool if Adidas ripped up the contract. Why? Who would you want him to um, sign with? You know, get him back. Get them to who? Get them in like New Balance or something. I want to see like the, the the complete the complete downfall, yeah, complete fall from grace. They're get they got like Hummel kits. They got Micon kits with like the little circle and triangle. Oh on it. man, that'd be good. That'd be good. Is that everything? Well, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, that's 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 everything for now. Maybe we'll jump back later All after right. the PSG game. Uh, if there's any anything crazy that comes from that, but uh, Brooks, it's been a pleasure, and uh, thank you everybody for hanging out with us, and we'll see you next week.